Hey my friends, it's God's Master, AKA G to the three, and I'm excited to bring you a video. It's been a minute since I brought you one, but this one's really cool because all kinds of things have happened. VIP has happened inside the group, however you feel about VIP, it's very interesting. Uh, also, in addition to that, I'm moving myself around here, as I look at myself, hi, how are you? It's fantastic. The other thing that's going on right now is a couple of notes about VIP. If you join VIP and you wind up getting all of the cards in a specific block or set, then stop opening the packs. Look, I have all of the standard masterpieces, mythics, all of that stuff. Everything is completely done here, but I still have another pack to open. So I'm gonna wait until the next set comes out and open it then. I'm not sure that's gonna work, but that's what I plan on doing because it's my material and I hope I can be able to collect it. Although I don't know that they would stay that long. So it might have to open up. So I'm gonna recontact support and see if I can't get them to answer that question for me as we go. Uh, in addition to that, this is also all of the uh, additional newer stuff that's in here. I already have all of those, so I'm holding out to the next packet. At any rate, that's not why we're shooting this video, and that's not why you're here. You're here because you wanna see what's going on with these Planeswalkers. I am so excited. We got two new Planeswalkers that I'm excited to get. I like colorless Planeswalkers for some reason because I like being able to open myself up to all different colors. I still think uh, Karn is the best because of his search ability and how he boosts his own deal, but Ugin looks like he can do some really neat stuff. I'll tell you who I'm really excited about, this little girl right here, Miss Tamio, Field Researcher. She's a three color white deck, or white uh, planeswalker with blue and green. That allows us some redonkulous possibilities. I don't even care about her abilities. I just, I'm excited over the fact that white has a three color uh, option now to go play blue and green and or green. So that opens us up to all kinds of ridiculous things that we can do starting next week. So I'm excited for that. I'll shoot that video for you guys when it's time. For now though, Ugin, the spirit dragon. So right now, as we get started, you see he's 850 to get going. Uh, he's got his usual deck setups, no big deal. Uh, he's minus one to all of his bonuses. I think when he's all said and done, he only gets plus one to all of his bonuses. But when you use his first ability, it increases his mana bonuses. So not too exciting there. You gotta use that a couple of times to get it done. But uh, I do like his third ability. It's you draw cards, you get 10 power, but let's go, let's get him. First off, let's make the purchase. Bam. All right. Boom, let's see what we get. We get Ugin the Spirit Dragon, and we get all, <laughs> we get nothing but stuff I've already had millions of. All right, so let's get going through it. Let's start leveling this puppy up. So we're gonna take a screenshot right now. First off, uh, let's put me down here. And yeah, right there. And then we're gonna say, bam. So we've got a screenshot of the first one. Let's get going. So we're gonna say one, two, three, four, five. And that says Ghostfire is now level one. So Ghostfire, you can now add one more support to your deck. Uh, hit points increased by six and white match now gives one more mana. So we're gonna take a screenshot of that real quick for the people that are like to see the static stuff. All right, cool, uh, neat. Next, so we're gonna keep going. Two three, four, all right. So now Hedron Banishing is now level one. Hit points increased by six and you can now add one more creature to your deck. Bam, so those are those levels. And next we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Boom, I messed up. Uh, I should've kept one more. All right, maybe it's five, nope. <laughs> all right, so at level 62, that's what happens there. All right, let's keep going. All right, so that's now done. Pools of Beckoming, Becoming is now level one. All right, so let's go take a look at what he is right now. So that happens at level 16 is when that opens up. Uh, normally they do that at like level 18, but all right, cool. So that's where that is. Let's keep going. All right, so that goes to level two. Now Ghostfire is level two. Your Planeswalker regeneration is improved. Red match now gives one more mana. Hit points increased by three. Let's scoop that down. Screenshot, bam. All right, and let's go on to level two of... Something going on here. All right, let's see. All right. So now Hedron Banishing is now level two. Let's see, is that everything? Yep, and green match now gives us one more mana. What's funny is I don't even know what his total stats are. I just wanted him, so I got him. And I got all the runes to burn. All right, and then 
pools of becoming. Oop, I already did it. It was at level 30, not 31. All right, so green match now gives one more mana. Awesome. And then we go back. Oh, now we've got this screenshot. Bam. So deal two damage to target creature. If that creature is colored, increase your mana bonuses on each of that creature's colors by one. Let's just keep going. You get it. You see that here. You can pause the video and read the standards yourself. All right, there's three. This goes far as now level three. Black match now gives one more mana. Hit points increase by three. You can add one more spell. So I think we might have enough spells now. Whoop. Didn't mean to take that shot. Here we go. Let's keep going. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. So level 90, no, level 40. He gets 90 hit points. Hedron Banishing is now third level. And... All right, now level 46. Pools of Becoming is now level three. Blue Match now gives one more. And we keep going. Awesome, now let's max this puppy out, level one. Oh, there it is. So at level 50, Ghostfire is now level four. Hit, uh, you can now add one more creature to your deck. Hit points increase by six. Sweet, one more. Let's keep going, boom, 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 boom. Boom. Nope. Ah, premature. Premature release. <laughs> Anybody relate? All right, so there's that. There it is. Okay, so at level 56, uh, you get all that stuff. All right, and here we go. Let's go up max. I'm assuming this is going to happen at max level. Level 60. And I did not even count... What we had before i will go back and do the math on how many um deals it took uh, or how many runes it took to level them up probably the same as uh, sarkin and or sarkin the unbroken and um uh nico bolos for three color stuff so there you go there we have it so now we have all of our stuff done so uh three deal three damage to target creature if that creature is colored increase your mana bonuses on each of that creature's colors by two. Each mana bonus you can't uh, can't be raised by this ability more than three times. So that's a permanent thing. That's not till end of turn. That's something that stays indefinitely. So that's kind of neat. Doesn't draw you a card, but it does do damage. The downside to that is there's got to be a creature on the board for you to a target in order to make that happen. So that kind of stinks. Uh, his Hedron Banishing full max is exile target opponent, opposing creature that costs 16 or less. This is surprisingly stronger than I thought. I faced this with my angel deck, which everything is like 16 or lower uh, for, for my angels on the board. And they just, he just kept bouncing everything. And it's pretty quick to get to with 12. But exile target opposing creature that costs 16 or less. If that creature is colored, exile an opposing colored support that costs 13 or less. Eh, okay, pretty situational. But let's look at his maximum. Gain 15 life, draw five cards, and the first five cards in your hand gain 10 mana. So the deck idea here is to go build a deck that has 10 mana casting cards in it as the deal. So let's go start building a deck. Well, first off, let's go collect some prizes here. Bam. Got all those cards. That's a thousand. I'll take it. Close. Expert deck. Bam. I get five of them bad boys. Five pinky dinkies. And then my master deck, I get 20, right? Bam. I got them all. All right, here's my custom deck, and I'm going to go ahead and unlock a secondary deck just with runes because I got more runes than a <laughs> Shaolin Monk. I don't know who has runes. A, a cleric from Dungeons and Dragons? I don't know. All right, so let's go build a deck here. Let's build a legacy deck. And uh, we're going to go, let's just do, so what I do is I go, and, let me build the deck. I'll come back and I'll explain what I'm doing. We'll take it from there. Okay, so I spent some time here in my office here, studio, but basically I took some time, I set this deck up, and I decided to go with an all 10. So this is a legacy build, it's all 10. Uh, Blue Sun Zenith is the only card outside of 10, and as well as Sunbird's Invocation. So that's the fuel engine that drives this whole process. So it's a basic cheat to get to his ultimate without that. Now, if you don't have those cards, um, then you want to go with two other uh, cards you can go in here, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to build another build here in a second. But here's here's this first initial breakdown. So Blue Sun Zenith, Stitch in Time, Inferno Jet, Sunbird's Invocation, Imminent Doom. That's really the, the driving force of the, the win con. 
uh, sorcerer spyglass to keep them from doing anything. Deputy of detention is really important because it helps eliminate threats on the board that are targetable. Uh, Craxo, Traxos is just something on the board to give you an extra body just in case. Um, we may we may not even need him. We can probably take him out in favor of adding something else to the deck. Uh, Beneath the Sands is, and Thunder Herd's migration. Now, there's other better converter engines that work in this process, but the reason I like these two is because they're at 10 and they can just cycle through. So they can actually take care of the Sunbird's Invocation. Now, truthfully, if you're running this much conversion in a deck, you can probably put something that's a little bit bigger in there, uh, card-wise, maybe like a Djinn, and then you could run something like the... Um, uh, the the uh, scape uh, rupture rupture uh, scape <laughs> I forget what it is scape rupture scape or, or the rupture scape combo I just call them that so uh, uh, landscape or, or scape craft or whatever it is pulls that and then now it's bothering me I got to go know what that scape shift and rupture spire I don't know why I couldn't remember those names so uh, when you pull those combos you can pr run them with them however the scape shift I think is a twelve so it's not the same so at any rate. This is what I've built right now. Let's go take a look at it. I've played a couple of games with it already. It's pretty smooth, um, but let's take a look and see what she does. Uh, let's heal up. So I'm at 118 life max, and let's get her done. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, so now a couple of things to keep in mind with the great Oogs uh, is that you need to really be spacing stuff out. So when I'm trying to run a cycle deck, I'll charge something up to be able to fire off. Uh, the first one, and since I've got no priority on stuff, let's just go ahead and try to maximize as much crush as I can on the gems, gem smasher. Uh, and I don't mind getting Traxos out now, so that by the time he gets to his secondary deal, that looks good. Let's see what we got there. Um, and if I miss stuff, if you guys see things, comment below in the video. Definitely let me know what you think or some other suggestions for it. Okay, so this is part of the reason why I like charging up these kinds of secondary cards. So now I can go fuel Blue Sun Zenith. And this gives me an extra turn. I think I'll probably get to ultimate right now uh, with that card. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I can cheat with? What do I need? Six. I'm going to get five. So I need to get a double click here. I think it's actually that'll work right there. Bam. Boom and boom. So that should ultimate and that should be game. Uh... Now that one, not because of Ugin, that wins, this wins because of uh, Blue Sun Zenith. So on the next game we're going to play, I'm going to try to get it to go uh, to his ultimate. And it might even happen now. Like we might stall out like this from time to time. It does happen where it stalls and it doesn't go, but this should continue to go. And there's Imminent Doom and now we should start dealing damage. There's one, there's 12, there's one. Then I'll go to two, then I'll go to three, then I'll go to four. It's a powerful card. So if you're in any kind of thing where you need to meet objectives, especially if it's in like a tournament or something like that, and you want to meet your objectives quickly, Eminent Doom can win the game fast, faster than you can finish objectives. So you got to be careful with it. If it's just deal damage in a certain turn, awesome. Eminent Doom works best. If you're grinding out runes and everything else that you need, it's a great place to go here. Now I'm going to mute this. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do his ultimate. So we're going to gain 15 life. I'm going to get five cards, and they're all going to get powered, right? And except the last one. I don't know why that didn't get boosted. That's weird. I caught a glitch. So we're going to ditch it since it's not powered up. And I'm going to put this as last. And yeah, since we're going to have an extra turn, I don't need to undo that. Let's see if that works. All right. And smash. Here it comes to smash the face. And <laughs> so I work here in my office here in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, my home office. And what I'll do oftentimes is I'll start these these cycle card decks. So I'm grinding out <laughs> objectives or just you know gathering the next store of gold for the next release set uh, which is pretty exciting what's coming out and i'll just let the thing run i'll start the combo set it down run and i'll work for a bit and then i'll check on it again and usually it's done and i've grinded out what i need to for the objectives for it so pretty fun stuff um yeah and this should be game right here
Bam. So you got a chance to see the deck ultimate and go from there. Now I'm going to build another deck here that's going to be just uncommon, some basic stuff to show you how you can actually use this stuff uh, or use Ugin to be able to, even if you don't have a ton of really like mythic overpowered MP cards or masterpieces, how to be able to do it. So let's build that and then I'm going to show you what it does. Okay, so it took me a little while and a wardrobe change and I had to uh, run an errand real quick, but I built a standard deck and I played it a few times. So it consists of Scape Shift, Masterminds Acquisition, Thunderhood Migration, a Circuitous Route, uh, Rupture Spire, Grand Warlord, Radahada Matata, Sift, Bacon Bolt, Book Devourer, and Sphinx Tutelage. This is the driving force in this engine. Between Book Devourer and Sphinx Tutelage, it helps you reload your, your hand and it actually locks down your opponent's um, deck. And these are all uncommon cards, so these should be pretty easy cards for you to be able to get a hold of. So if you don't have them... You should be able to craft them fairly easily. And this is all standard. And this is, I'm playing inside of the uh, Legacy Training Grounds area. So, so far I've played five matches with it, only lost once. And it was to a Karn deck, so I'd like to actually face Karn again. Because I just was playing it wrong. I was trying a different strategy to, to boost up my mana uh, objectives. And so far what I find is his first ability should only be used if you have a creature with triple color. Um, or double color. If it's a single color deal, it's not really worth it. Um, I'd rather try to get to my ultimate first and then go from there. And even like right now, we don't have anything to cast, but if we can get this to go off, this is actually a good thing. Because then what will happen is that I'm going to be able to um, uh, get my deal off here. So let's see, we'll go. Um, Actually, we can go here. All right. Cool, cool. That looks like that's going to start the combo. Neat. And we have him out. He's the only thing I think that I've got that's over 10. Everything else is above the... Oh, man, he bounced him. <laughs> that's lame. All right. And we might want to play some type of bounce or something in here, but I just... I, I literally put no thought into this other than... The general concepts of the deck. All right, so let's do this. And let's see if we have any potential. Ooh, fancy. All right, so that's going to be a problem. This is the first time I'm play facing something that big and strong right now. Uh, let's see. And I can't target him with his first ability, which really sucks, which makes it kind of a pointless ability if you can't target folks with it. I think I'm going to put this there. And we're going to, what is this? Uh, that's just a deal that doesn't matter. Um, but it will give us some opportunity. Bam. All right, here we go. So now uh, Sarkin has his ultimate ability. He's not using it yet. He used his secondary ability, which is still going to be problematic. I might want to put something that's bounce, uncommon bounce in here, like just wipe the board, kind of clear it. Probably a smart play. Just didn't do it. So let's actually sift here. And try to lock him down from getting anything else out. Uh, let's see. And I can ultimate, too. I should probably just ultimate on my next turn. All right, here we go. Bam. Shot to the face. All right, can I beat Sarkin the completely broken? Let's see. All right, so I don't need that. I've got all my pieces in place. Um, do I want to keep that? I think I do. And normally if you have some stuff that's powered up and you can't get it on the board, Bacon Bolt is the way to go. Another thing, too, that I really love about this deck or using this third ultimate ability is uh, Mastermind's Acquisition. So what we want to do is we want to go get that out right away. We have Bacon Bolt Charge there at the end. We will make that here. Actually, no, we won't. We'll do that here. And let's see if we can ultimate again on the next turn. Bam, bam. Okay, let's see what we get. Now, ideally, you want to pick something that's going to go um, right away. So I'm going to select that. See if we can get that thing to max out. And get two rounds with this. And every time I'm drawing a card... Um, oh shoot, I should decline this. All right, I'm going to take that. But now I'm not now. Uh, I'm going to Bacon Bolt. 
Uh, do I want to bacon bolt that? No, I want to bacon bolt face. Let's see if I can get this to go. Well, There's only six anyways. Um, no, not now. Let's get it to ultimate. Because my book devourer is not going to run until this this charge. Uh, let's see if I survive. Mm. All right, so this is... Actually, i got one more turn after this if he doesn't do anything. All right, let's get this out of here. Let's get this out of here. And let's go to town. Cool, I'm going to get a second turn after this. <laughs> this is fun. All right, let's see. All right. Bam, look at that. Combos galore. Now I have enough to kill that. That'll give me two turns. I should go ahead and kill that now to give myself an extra turn. That's there. And I haven't used his ultimate ability again yet, so I get to do it again. And what this does is you're seeing right now with a Sphinx Tutelage, it's basically making his top card more and more expensive, and he's just going to keep that on board. Challenge is I can't get rid of that untargetable guy, so I've got to add something that is... Oh, we're going to do this first. I've got to add something that is... Um, actually, I should do... Yeah, let's see what I get first, and that way I can sift, and then I've got... I can probably throw this out too. That way if I'm drawing cards, it's coming out now. Okay, uh, let's see here. Oh, I get to go again. Bam. Lucky day. Kill ugly one who wanted Miuru. So this is his hand. Let's see, what do we want to take? Um, I can do another scape shift. Wait, what's Perilous Voyage? Actually, maybe we'll take Perilous Voyage. Maybe that'll bounce his dude. Oh, yeah, we want another one of those. And that's it. Let's do that. Bam. Confirm that did bounce this guy. Killed it. Nice. Uh, we can take that. And that should do it as well. Let's see if we get ourselves ultimate to the next level. Yeah, we did. And we've gained life somewhere. I don't know where we gained life. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, let's see. We can't run that ultimate again. Obvious. Obvi. So let's go ahead and do that. Get another turn. It's powered up for the next turn. Pretty good, man. This is a fun little build. I, I, it's more of a control... And, um, but it rocks, man. Let's do that. And there's another ultimate right there he's going to take advantage of, so that stinks. Oh, he didn't do it. Oh, yeah, he did. He did. He's just smarter than I am. All right. What are you getting out now? See, that's not cool. <laughs> not cool at all, bro. Come on, man. Not cool. So Mastermind's Acquisition, what we want to do, we don't need another one of these. So let's get rid of that. That way everything we draw has pretty much got a chance to be ultimate or a uh, full power to cast rupture spire sphinx tutelage shift sift rather uh, let's do that this is a longer game man hanging in there uncommon cards versus mythics and masterpieces and all that kind of stuff let's actually take that uh, let's take, actually, let's take that. Now, the reason I'm taking these things now is because these are going to get dropped. They're not going to be, actually, I don't want that. I want that. These are all going to get replaced right now when the book devourer goes. So these are actually the cards I want in my hand on the next go round. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Come on, man. I went down to 36 life and now... I'm back down to 33 left, went back up to 50. Wiped the board, and now these guys are all back out here again. What color is he? He's oh, he's double color, so I'm going to go ahead and take his deal. So now that makes me a red and green plus three. So I think we got a better chance of that. Red and green, red and green. That will work. Will that work? <laughs> If you're watching this on YouTube and you were wanting to 2x speed, this might be a good idea to get that done. Um, so this is still penalizing his next card. Here's the card I actually really want to play. <clears throat> I think this might be it. I think I lost. 
Bam, I got five life left, and I got to do something that allows me to, to capture him. What do I got? Okay, so I got to do Mastermind's Acquisition into that. Um, let's... Let's see the board first. Maybe I've got an ultimate here I can play. Nope. There's no double combos or anything like that. Man, I was really close. Come on, man. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and beef my bonus up here. And I don't think that there's anything I can do here that's going to save it. So I need to go through and add... <clears throat> I need to add a... Um, Um, he's got haste. Can I get there? No, I'm not going to get there. No, that's game. All right. Hey, we tried. That was fun. <clears throat> All right. So he's got me short of him doing something to nuke himself. I don't think he's going to do that. But you never know. Greg is kind of an idiot. Nope, he beat me. All right, well, that was fun. <clears throat> so that's the second loss this deck has had. I need to add some board wipes to it. Other than that, it's a fun deck. Um, something that basically pushes stuff back. Let me go edit the deck right now. Ah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to edit the standard deck to include some type of bounce um, for under 10. Return... Okay, so we're going to do spell. Uh, actually, we're going to do common, uncommon, and we're going to do something in standard right now. So, and usually these bounce cards are all the way here. So disperse is, if your opponent has five or less cards, I don't like that. Surveil, then draw a card. Nope. Target creature gets blah, blah, blah. Mm, nope. Uh, return the first creature your opponent controls to its owner's hand. If a creature was cost 10 or less, draw a card. So this is a great one for our deck. We're going to throw that in there. Is there any others? Um, depths of Desire. So it's, the reason I want to avoid the word target is so that it just returns whatever we've got. So Perilous Voyage is good. What's a dead card that we really don't use a lot of spell-wise? Mm, need Beacon Bolt, need Sift. That helps reload our hand for a 3 to 1. <clears throat> Honestly, man, it might be Grand Warlord Rada Mahata. He's nice to add some extra mana, but the mana doesn't matter with this build, so... Oh, actually, I need to get rid of his spell. Uh, Circuitous Route. I hate to get rid of a conversion deal for it, but I think that's what we've got to play. And, yeah, that's the way we go. So, uh, that's it. I hope you liked this video. I'm going to go ahead and play this a few more times, see if this works. might be the final build. That way we have some way of getting rid of some of those other cards. Uh, and this might be a fairly good deck, so if you like it, here's one last look at it. Real quick, so this is a standard build. There you go. I'm going to take a screenshot so I can post it on the Facebooks. And um, yeah, that's it, man. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any deck ideas or things I obviously missed, let me know. Keep me posted. And I will talk to you guys on the next one. Have a good one. Bye.